Hello, my name is Justin Urquhart Stewart, and welcome back to my uh, regular Natter About Things on the Markets. For those who've uh, seen us before, then welcome back. And if you haven't, then uh, you're very welcome to be here. So, a quick talk about particular subjects, and this week it's going to be about emerging markets, something which has been quite close to my heart, if only because I've worked in various emerging markets and got a lot of friends and come to that family there as well. You have to be careful of the, some of the terminology here, emerging markets, developing markets, frontier markets, and uh, those of us in the West can get wonderfully patronising about it, particularly for British, who some still consider part of the world to be pink in terms of the colour of the empire on most uh, globes dating back to imperial days. But in fact, actually, of course, emerging markets, you're talking about emerging and developing economies, and this has a huge impact on the rest of us. So we should take a greater look. Now, given what's happened with the pandemic, there's been far greater focus on, quite rightly, what's happening in America and the American markets and the other leading markets, obviously Japan and also in the EU as well and the United Kingdom. But we shouldn't ignore the emerging markets. Traditionally, of course, people have just merely lumped them together as some strange bunch of countries that normally deal with commodities, oil, gas and various types of minerals with a nice healthy element of corruption to go with it as well. And so on that basis, um, why would you actually bother? Well, the commodities are still going to be there. There's no changing that. And the corruption, well, there's still a fair amount of that in countries, but it is significantly changing. And one of the key issues of changing it is actually the taxation. If you try and pay, you know, get people to pay income tax, funny enough, whether you're in America or Uganda, actually people do their best trying not to pay income tax. If you actually have a sales tax, then actually it actually gets, tends to get passed through the system far more easily and tends to be collected more easily. So it somehow changes the mechanism. It's not perfect. However, emerging markets, there are three areas we should actually look for because what have they got in common? One, they are developing infrastructure because they need to develop. They haven't got the infrastructure and therefore where do they get it from? The Chinese quite often are very happy to pay for it, albeit we won't go into details about how it's paid for. But that's a continuing issue. And I don't just mean roads and bridges, but other more advanced infrastructure. The second element is technology. These countries have the ability not to put in a telephone system, but to bypass the telephone system and go directly to broadband and things like that. And leaping across the fact you'd go to a, a village to outside Entebbe and sit in that village and talk to the children there and show them pictures of Mars live is really quite remarkable. And so that's fantastic how this technology has changed. And the third issue are consumers. The emerging nation consumers, they are changing rapidly and becoming much more of a middle class. This is a huge generalization. It varies greatly. But whether you're looking in China and India, well, yes, they're huge, great nations, but they are still developing and a lot to go. Or whether you're looking at countries in, say, ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, some really very well-developed nations there and wealthy ones as well. Yes, commodities behind it, but also those three elements of infrastructure, technology and consumers are rising very quickly indeed. So the likes of Indonesia, uh, the likes of the Philippines, certainly when you look at Vietnam and particularly someone like Malaysia. So you can see how that's changing. People sometimes write off Africa, but that too is going through, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, some very significant changes as well. Still a lot of commodities uh, being focused on there. That's not the only issue. So once you've identified that actually there are opportunities here, how do you go about it? Two ways. One, you can try and invest locally, but the chances are you will find those markets are very limited, small numbers of companies, and actually not with a great deal of a control or compliance over the operation of those countries and their accounting. Or you can invest domestically in companies that we know that are affected by emerging markets, sell goods, provide services to those areas. So the two different ways of actually going about it. Do not ignore the emerging nations. That is actually the future of the global economy. And from our Western point of view or developed point of view, we can take advantage of that for ourselves and for our clients and for our portfolios. Do not ignore them. Good luck, but you need to do some research. Look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.